Hey everyone, welcome to another thousand dollar strap search. I've got my thousand dollars in singles here and I'm about to show you what I found. But before I do, let's talk about this week's tip. Now, I always start my videos showing you guys what a thousand dollars in singles actually is. Okay, that is my thousand in singles. That's how I started out. But you'll notice that my thousand in singles um, are roughly compact. Um, all the notes are for the most part, not dog-eared. They are all faced. They are all in order. And uh, just from a teller's perspective, this is the kind of notes that they like to see. <laughs> um, that's why I, I make sure that I always put my stuff in decent condition. Now, another thing you're going to notice is that they are pretty much uniformly uh, thick. <laughs> and you're saying, of course, there's 100 notes in there. They're, of course, they're going to be the same. Well, no, not necessarily. When I get notes from a bank, they don't come like this. They come like this. This is what I'm used to getting, okay? You can see there are notes sticking out of the end. There are notes coming out here. You can see you've got some fly-by-nighters here. You can see that the rubber banding has definitely deformed notes, and you can tell these have been rubber banded for quite some time. Um, yeah, this is what I'm used to getting as far as notes. Um, what is that? Oh, that's going to be a good one. All right, cool. 1988. Anyway, this is what I'm used to getting whenever I get my notes. I'll get two of these just about every time I go somewhere. Now, what I will do is I will then take these and I will press them under some heavy books. And that is what makes them look like that once I am ready to go through with them, once I'm ready to go and sort them all out. Let me not bump my camera here. <laughs> there we go. So that's my thousand and singles, and that's what I do with them. I always press my singles. That way they're all laying flat. That way when I go through them, um, I, of course, am going to put them so that they are all faced. And when I hand two of these to the tellers, they don't look at me like I'm some bum off the street cashing in singles. They know that my stuff is counted. And I can't even tell you the number of times I've handed two straps to a teller and they just handed me two $100 bills without even running them through a machine. Not because I'd try to short them a dollar or anything else, but because they know that whenever they get stuff from me, they know the care that I put into it. Therefore, I am more likely to be accurate, and they know they're gonna see that I'm they're gonna see me again. So, if the, even if there was a problem, uh, they'll just get me next time if there was. But I've never encountered that. I've had a total of I think five times five times that I've had a strap that was short out of the close to two thousand straps I've returned. So I have a pretty high accuracy percentage with the tellers. Anyway, that's my thousand in notes. That's what it looks like after, and once again, this was the before, and of course, who wouldn't want to handle these rather than these? I'm saying, if you're a collector, be the good guy, not the bad guy. All right, let's slide these out of the way, take a peek at what I found this week. Here we go. Found a Where's George? I've definitely seen that one before. It's got a little bit of writing on it. I will be logging this right away. Um, what do we got next? A trinary. This is twos, sevens, and eights. This one is threes, fours, and eights. Another trinary here, zeros, ones, and eights. Really nice shape. This is threes, fives, and sixes. That's six, one note away. The note before this was three, five, five, three, three, five, three, five. That would have been a binary. One away from a binary, literally one away from a binary. Ones, fours, and fives on this one. Zeros, fives, and sevens. A little bit of an overprint on that seven there, you can see. Uh, look at this, another one, just two off from a binary, five, five, seven, five, seven, five, seven, nine. Still a trinary. I don't know what that is. Looks like somebody stepped on it or something. Uh, what do we got here? Ones, fours, and fives on this one as well. Pretty decent shape. Twos, threes, and sixes. And then we get to quads. I've got quad ones on this note. Pretty rough shape on that one. Quad fives here. Another note with quad fives, quad sevens, and my stars. 2013 star, New York. Got to check that, see if it's one of the duplicates. Uh, 2013 star, once again, this one is from San Francisco. 2013, another New York note. So a couple potential for duplication there. 
I did a whole video on the uh, New York stuff, so you can double check that back. But just so you know, the, there are two places that print notes. They would be Fort Worth and the Washington uh, uh, printing, uh, printing and engraving. Um, anyway, they told both places for the 2013 New York note to print to print star notes, and they both did, and they both started at the same number. So there are repeat notes. This one here, you can see FW, that's from Fort Worth. If it doesn't have the FW right here, then it's from Washington. So yeah, there's a chance you can find those together. Another star note here, another 2013. And then we get some older notes. Um, 2003 A isn't really that old, but it's a J, Kansas City. And I just wanted to double check it against my book to see if I had it or not, because this one is in decent shape especially for its age. Another 2003A, this one is from Cleveland. It's got a D, so once again, another note I don't see very often. I see a lot of Gs, I see a lot of Ls, um, but D I don't see, J I don't see, so I wanted to check that with my book. Then we get to the 2001s. Now these are where I start saving them, almost regardless of condition. 2001 here, 1999. 1995. Now in the 95s, you want to be checking the back uh, for a plate number. I believe it's 129, if I recall off the top of my head. Uh, the number almost isn't important because the number, instead of being printed here, it's printed on this side. So it makes it very easy to identify the error on that note. Uh, so yeah, you want to check your 1995s whenever you find those. Also, 1995 is your first shot at a web note. A web note won't have all of this here. It will only have one single digit for a plate number and on the back of the note instead of the plate number being on the bottom the plate number is going to be up here where it says in god we trust so that's the 95 uh, 1993 also a shot at a web note but we can see here it's not another 1993 1988a this was the first year that they had web notes so this had all three 88a 1993 and 1995 those are the three series you can find the web notes and this one's a little beat up, 1985. A lot beat up on that, actually. Probably going back. And the oldest note I found, a 1963 in circulation. Now, this is a big deal because 1963 series was the very first series for $1 bills in this particular uh, design. Uh, the Green Seal Federal Reserve notes. So to come across one of the original notes in circulation, that, that's kind of a big deal. I wish this was in better shape. The thing is, a lot of people save these notes, so you can find these at shows regularly in perfect shape. Um, 63s, you don't find in circulation because people pulled them and saved them. But once you start to get notes in the uh, 69 series with all the different letters that they use there, as well as the notes in the 70s, people didn't bother to save those. So those are real tough to find in circulation and in shows. But a 63, this is one of the originals, so that's a cool find for me. All right, so what did I pull out this week? Well, this week, um, not the most expensive note I have, but it is an interesting note. This is a 1935 silver certificate, $1 silver certificate from 1935, and it's a star note. <laughs> You'll notice that the star is on the wrong side. <laughs> no, that's just how they did the star notes at that particular time. Um, when they did silver certificates uh, in this particular series, they didn't issue them through a Federal Reserve because these are not Federal Reserve notes. These are silver certificates. Um, in comparison, when you look at the two, this particular note, it has the K representing the Federal Reserve of Dallas, and the serial number starts with K representing Dallas, has all the numbers, and then it has A, meaning that it was the first time that they ran through all the numbers. In comparison, we're going to talk about this particular star note. It starts off with a star because there was no Federal Reserve, and uh, well, <laughs> I'm saying that wrong. Um, they put the star on this side because this side does not represent any particular Federal Reserve. Many of the star notes on this side um, were usually had the A on them, and then they'd change this letter, if I recall correctly. And then once they've gone through all the letters, then they would change this one to a B and then repeat the letters over here. Anyway, when they did the stars, they did the stars on this side. Now, ultimately, though, why I have this particular note it's because of this. It's a 1935 Series G. 
for those of you who remember the 35 G's, that is the year, the transition series for In God We Trust. So you can find a 1935 G that has no motto on the back, and you can find one that says In God We Trust. Now, why they didn't break that into a separate series, I don't know, but it is a transitional series. Some of them have In God We Trust, some of them don't. So I figured, you know, I should probably pick up a star with the motto and a star without the motto. This one is the star without the motto. I'm still trying to hunt down one with the motto. And it's interesting because when you start looking at these plates, I mean, obviously 1935G, there must have been the 35 set, then the A, B, C, D, E, and F sets. So look at the plate number. <laughs> the plate number on this note, 8183. That's a huge plate number. What is it on the back? Look at the back plate, 6572. 6,572 plates they burned through by the time they got to this one. 8,000 on the front like that. So that's pretty impressive. Anyway, 1935G star note, you can see $12 here. It's somewhere between the $10 and $20 range based on, well, it might be a little bit more. It might be a little nicer than that. In fact, I can take out the book and double check it real quick. Let's see what the book has to say. Now, this particular one is the, you can see how they have the listing here for with the motto, In God We Trust. And then up top here, these are the ones without the motto. So mine is uh, FR 1616 star. And you can see in VG8, it starts at $5, 12 is 750 uh, when you get to 20, you're talking $10. EF40 is $20. Uh, even in mint condition, you're talking $95. In comparison to the star with the motto, starts at $15. Um, so you can see $5 here, $15 here, $32 for the 12, $50 for the 20. Um, yeah, those two stars are pretty neat when you compare the two. And uh, I want to make sure I get those before everybody else does. So this one here, <laughs> this is the without motto star. The easier and the cheaper of the two to get. All right, guys, that's what I've got for you this week. If you learned anything new, go ahead and hit that like button. If you like what you see and you want to see more, please subscribe. I love reading all your comments. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you again next week.